Hey guys, what's going on? So today we've got a really exciting episode. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today, right? And as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, especially if you're in the restoration trade or if you're a contractor, you've got a lot of questions, right? You, you've you got these questions when you're in the truck and you're trying to figure out, hey, how do I get out of the truck? How do I finally start working on my business instead of inside of my business every single day? Well, today I've got the guy who can go ahead and answer all of these questions and then some, but we got to roll the intro first. Owning any type of restoration business is demanding demanding of your time, your energy, and resources. And that's why we're here. This is Restoration Domination. If you're a contractor in water mitigation, mold remediation, biohazard cleanup, roofers, or public adjusters, you'll learn how to dominate using some of the techniques and strategies that our guests will share. We'll interview top industry insiders, movers and shakers, hustlers and hackers, and anyone dominating their industry. This is Restoration Domination. Hustle, hack, and dominate. And here's your host, Rico Garcia. All right, all right, all right. So today I'm really excited to bring to the show Edon from 911 Restoration, co founder, right? 911 Restoration. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah, man. I'm really excited. We already had a nice little uh, five minute, 10 minute powwow uh, off yeah. camera. And uh, I think this is going to be a good show, man, because I think that you and I are pretty much on the same track uh, mentally as for when it comes down to marketing. I, th I saw I was talking about uh, I was giving you a little bit of my background. And when I mentioned the marketing thing, you kind of started giggling a little bit. You're like, oh, that's funny because we we, we kind of have that same uh, scenario there. So uh, let's talk. Let's take it from the beginning. Right. Like, you know, who are you right from the beginning when you came to the US? How did everything happen? You know, how did you get to the position you are today? Yeah, so as you hear my accent, I'm originally from uh, Israel. So I grew up in a small farm in the south part of Israel. Most of my life, I worked in uh, agriculture, you know, growing vegetables, flowers, fruits, and all that. A very small area that I lived in, so very intimate, about 48 families, and uh, joined the Israeli army. And right after that, I heard about the American dream. You know, money grows on the tree, every house of a pool. You come in, you can buy any car that you want. So we saved, uh, I worked as a bellboy, I saved a little bit of money. I came here with a good friend that we served together in the Israeli army. And uh, not really knowing anyone, having about a thousand dollar each. So it's about $2,000. And um, yeah, we just came to America. I, I remember the I, I remember as we landed and we standing in, in at, at the airport and all the signs are in English and we're look, looking at each other and like, how do we get out of here? Right. We That's don't even know where to go, right? right. So this is where we are coming to, to America. So we came to America. We heard that there is a big uh, Israeli community in the San Fernando Valley. We came here and we start really hanging out in area that we know that we have a good chance to meet to meet people that uh, speak Hebrew, really. And this is how we start building our connection. And one guy sent us to meet a guy that owned a carpet cleaning company. Um, and he was nice enough because what we did in the Israeli army to give us a chance. So. First day, he gave us a, a carpet cleaning mach machine and a, a bucket with a few chemicals. We own a Volvo 1978 two doors. He trained us for about a day and a half and we got our first lead. So this is really how we got into the carpet cleaning side of the business. Right. And uh, yeah, so at that point, really, I mean, we rented one bedroom apartment, you know, we're about four or five guys, um, you know, sleeping on the carpet. So every morning, 5, 6 a.m., it's uncomfortable. We got up, we drove to the city, the office open around 7.30. So as soon as the office open and ask who is available to take the first job, we're available. Right. right. 5, 6 p.m., everybody else went home. We have nothing to go back to. We stayed and we said, you know what? You never know if somebody's going to call at 8 p.m. We want to be available. So over the first six months, we drove everywhere. We took every lead. We travel to any place that we needed to. 
uh, because really at to one point we didn't have a choice right because we we had to make it right and um, that's that's a, that's a very very interesting point right sometimes too many choices is actually a bad thing right yeah, because yeah. now again if you had this nice big lush home four o'clock you're looking at your at your watch and you're like you know what I, I'm gonna go home right but when you don't have that and the struggle yeah. is real all of a sudden now you're like you know what I've got nothing to go home to let me grind it out so anyways go ahead yeah, 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 absolutely. So that was exactly the case. So we just stayed, we took every job. There was, there were, we didn't care how far it is, how small it is, how big it is. We knew that, first of all, we need to build our experience, right? We barely spoke the language. We didn't have any sales experience. I didn't go to sales school. So we said, as, let's do as much work as we can. So that way we can really understand the culture. We understand people. We, we had a chance to work on our English and get better and better. Right. So that first six months too, at that point, we built a habit in the office. So they knew that Idan is available, right? A lead comes in eight o'clock, 5 a.m., whatever time it is, Idan is available. So we build our reputation within the office. First of all, our client were super happy because we were super focused on the people in front of us. And we just did whatever we need to do, All right. So this was our six, seven, eight, first month in the business and what got me got us into the restoration space is we got our first call to a flooded house now we didn't know anything about blowers humidifiers or any of the restoration industry we just drove out there we extracted the water and we charged six hundred dollar we were super happy right super happy it was like a huge job i remember that night we celebrated by eating chinese food Nice. So our, uh, <laughs> yeah, a huge celebration. Huge. But another thing that we, we saw is as we're extracting the water and we are kind of working with the homeowner, there's a restoration company that arrived and they mm -hmm. walked in with floors and humidifiers and they were in cutting the wall, set, set, setting up the equipment and they were out. Right. And we're, we're looking at each other as like, okay, what is it that they're doing? because we don't know anything about it. Right. But another thing is, what about the homeowner? Like he sits there all confused, huge chaos. He doesn't know how he's gonna pay for it. And these guys are just in and out. Right. Right. And we are seeing the same thing again and again and again. And at one point I'm like, okay, first of all, I need to get into this business because I'm getting the calls anyway. It wasn't a lot of calls then. And I learned that that my six hundred dollar that I was very happy with suddenly I'm seeing that they're charging you know six seven ten thousand dollar right so I start buying my own equipment and the other thing that I start doing is really understanding how can I customize the level of service to really paying a lot more attention to the homeowner right right so I didn't want to be the company that just in and out right because I'm seeing the homeowner is completely flustered. How I'm gonna pay for it? What's gonna happen? You know, my, my kids, my family, I can, you know, it's it's a chaos, as you and, know. And like right? you said, this is something that happens a lot. And this is something that I've noticed myself, right? When we first got into the business, like I told you off camera, I didn't know, I didn't know the first thing about the restoration business. But what I did see was that every company out there, the majority of the companies out there were basically a commodity. You could have three different guys from three different companies and it was the exact same process. They would walk in, walk out, say, hey, you're Susie, just sign this. Don't worry about it. We'll explain it later. And then all of a sudden the homeowner was like, what, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That yeah. was one of the elements that I first looked at as well. And I was like, wait, hold on. There's got to be a better way to where we can become the non-commodity to actually be a little bit different, to be unique. And that's the only thing that makes our business different is the people, in my opinion. A thousand percent, a thousand percent. When you, re you know, the, the first time that it really hit me is one family that we worked for over the weekend. Um, we got everything done. There was a huge chaos in their house, a lot of stress. We got in there, we worked with them. Everybody were, perfectly fine after the homeowner called me a week after i'm like hey how are you stuff like that i'm like okay so what's up how can i help you he says no no Idan, i just want want to talk to you i'm like okay i'm here right he says i have to tell you when you walk into my house you took my stress level from a thousand to ten and i'm having a hard week so i just want to talk to you 
Right. And at that point, he's like, okay, this is it. This is the business that I'm in. Right. I'm not in the drying houses business. Mm -mm. I am in the business of helping people seeing the positive in the negative. Right. And that completely changed the way I approached the, the business from that day. Yeah, it's a My major paradigm shift. Not only for you, not only for you, but also for the homeowner, for you as a business owner to be able to take someone and take them through this journey and say, hey, look, this isn't negative. I mean, it's bad what's going, what's happening, but here's the bright side of what's happening. That is, that's where the magic happens, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when all the marketing material training my technician kind of building my team was all about around the idea of the fresh start we want to be the fresh start for these people right so before you walk into somebody's house you stop for a second you remind yourself that you're here to serve them even if you have 10 other projects going on and you worry about payroll and you worry about stuff right now the 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 10 seconds that you walk to his house this is where you're going to take a deep breath remind yourself i'm here to service that person right it's not about the house it's about the person first and when we start really building it as part of our culture that really starts separating us that's really when people called us back and says listen you guys really had a positive impact on us right so the conversation when we walked in it was where is the area that that is wet is like how are you right what's going on Right. What are you trying to achieve today? So, for example, if I get to a house that is flooded at 6 a.m., I know that the mom right now need to cook breakfast and make sure that her kids go to school. Right. My goal is to help her achieve that first. Right. So right? Okay. presence presence over profit is yeah. what's important. Um, one of the things that really bothered me as as a kid is um, I, sometimes we obviously we would have family members, sometimes they would get sick, they would end up in a hospital, whatever the case may be. And I noticed that people got jaded by their jobs. In other words, we were going through something and for us, it was dramatic, right? Like, you know, father was sick or mom was sick or something was going on. For us, we'd never gone through this before. So I would notice how people would just nonchalantly walk and it's part of their job. They see a thousand of these cases, but for me, this is new. And I yes. wanted I wanted to feel a certain degree of urgency from the other person, right? And that's always been something that stuck with me, right? It is like, whenever I see that, it, I know that for me, I get jaded, right? Because once you see a thousand flood jobs, I mean, there's yeah. not a whole lot, there's no novelty to it, right? But you have to be present. You have to say, hey, look, I'm here for you. I'm going to walk you through this entire thing. This is, you know, we're going to take care of you. That's the most important aspect. Yeah. And having that yeah. presence, right? Being present over the profit and stop thinking about, I have to get to my next client. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to. No, no, no. Take the time talk to them. And those relationships are the ones that grow. And that's when you get cheerleaders, right? Cheerleaders for your business exactly. or your brand, because again, you know, social media, and if not social media, you know, Sunday brunches and they're like, Hey, you know what? I just met this great guy. It was a horrible experience, exactly. but Oh my God, you know what? I felt so good about the way that they handled everything. That's four people yeah. that you just got a recommendation from, you know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, presence Absolutely. over profit, I think is important. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You're going to, this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about with my guys all the time. When you find fulfillment and financial success at the same time, this is how you win the game. Right. Right. Because when you find fulfillment from really seeing how you impact people's life, and you're going to end up making a lot more money because you're impacting people's life, this right. is how you really win the game. Right. Absolutely. Right, so, yeah. Having a yeah. successful business, I've had several discussions and I'm sure that somewhere on the internet, uh, you could probably find a video of me saying that you can fall in love with anything so long as you're winning, right? And as long as you're making money, it, if there's enough money in the game, you can pretty much fall in love with anything. However, that being said, true fulfillment and really taking it up, to, uh, up a notch and really taking it to the next level is when you can find that combination of Am I, do I have a successful business and am I also positively impacting someone's life, right? Yes. And when you find that, that's the secret. That's, that's the secret. Absolutely.
Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Yeah. So, I mean, at what point did you start developing a team? Um, you know, did you already buy out uh, AB Carpet? Can we get into yeah, that? Yeah. So about about a year in, at, at that point, a year, a year and a half in, um, at that point, we sold the Volvo 1978 that we had, and we bought a van. Uh, at that point, we own I don't know 30, 40 blowers. We own a few DUs. And how many? And how many guys? It's just you and your partner right now. Me, my partner, and we always had one or two guys that work with us. Like right? So we own? always had a, like a technician or somebody that we wanted to build into the business. Okay. Right. So now was this my, my or was this like a per diem type of guy? Whenever you needed him, he had it, or did you immediately start someone with? Oh, no, 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 no. We we had guys in the beginning that we just brought in as we need them per okay. project. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, I mean, in the, in the first year, we were doing around $250,000 a year. Okay. Right. So, you know, it's not big. We still do a lot of carpet cleaning and then a, a, a flood work whenever it came in. Right. right. So it wasn't that. But, we decide that we want to shift and become a restoration company. So you wanted to go more for the flooding and all the mold more, radiation uh, yeah, and that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. So yeah. just to back it up one little bit here, right? So that everybody knows what, you know, kind of what this journey actually looked like. Where were you getting leads yeah. from at this point? Was it just word of mouth? Was it, you know, knocking on doors? Like that first year, well, what were you doing? Yeah. Words of mouth, because a lot of the managers that we work with, that, that we clean the carpet for, we start telling them that we offer this type of services as well, mm -hmm. right? And uh, some of the guys in the industry knew that we kind of shifted into the, so we own equipment, we have blowers and humidifiers, and we actually know how to do the work. So we got a few floods from managers and people that knew us in the industry. Right. Okay. Right? Got it. And, yeah. and at that point, we knew that, okay, I want to make the shift and I want to own my own company. Um, but really the shift was because I want to, I want to become a restoration company. I want to move away from the carpet cleaning and I want to become a restoration company. Now, at that point, I didn't know anything about the mold or the fire. For right. me, it was just water damage. Right. Right. That was my main thing. Um, so at that point, we took over the company. And then I don't remember how long after, but one night I'm sitting at a dinner somewhere and I'm hearing two guys, and this was around 2003, 2004, I'm hearing two guys talking about Google. And I'm, and I'm hearing them saying, no, I put an ad up online and I generate sales. And, and I'm like, ads online, Google, generate sales, sound interesting. I need right. to go home now. Uh, right. <laughs> right. I went home that night online, Google, AdWords, how it works, kind of did my own research, set up my first ad on Google. I think then it was like a 50 cents or a dollar. A oh, yeah. No, it was dirt cheap. Yeah, it was stupid. Right. <laughs> it was crazy. And I didn't even I didn't even have a website, so I just put a phone number as part of the ad. Mm -hmm. Right? If your house flooded, call me now. Some, something like that. Day after, in the morning, I got my my first call. Right. And then every day after that, we generate a call. This was I think we were one of the only or a few other companies in in the LA area that advertise online. Which for those of you listening and or watching, this just goes to show the importance of being first to market. Um, a lot of times, even today, right? There's so many different social media platforms and you take them for granted, right? You got to get comfortable pulling out your phone and recording a video. You have to be comfortable uh, running ads and trying new things because if you would have missed out on that opportunity or thought, you know, hey, you know, I'm not technical enough. I don't know how to do this. Ah, it's just a fad. Would you? be where you are today, right? Because you can never really, if you remove one piece of the puzzle, right? Like it, you can, your life can go in a million different directions. So the fact uh -huh. that you took action and also first to market, because you were one of the few, right? Yeah. In your area that yeah. was running Google ads. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, and at the same time, almost everybody around me is like, Idan, don't waste time with this internet thing. You need to go back to the yellow pages. You need right. to advertise online. You need to do all the regular thing that everybody knows and used to. And I'm like, no, no, there, there is something here. And then every day I generate a call. That's, that was crazy. We grew the business from 250 to $3 million in about a year and a half to two years. This was already so, under the 911 yeah. restoration flag? Yes, yes, yes. This, right. this was already under us. And um, yeah, so at that point, I, I just 
And I think this is key. When you find that something is working in your business, full in, right? Take a massive action. Right. So I didn't say, okay, I'm going to try it. It's working. Now I'm going to go back and do the other thing. I was like, okay, how can I make it bigger? How can I make it bigger? How can I make it bigger? So now from developing websites to content, to AdWords, to hiring people um, to really work with me on the online lead generation, this become a huge focus. Right. Right. And then we discovered the mold and we discovered the fire and then the business kept de developing. Now, we didn't have any experience of building a business. Like zero experience. Right. So you can imagine all the mistakes that happen while we're building the business so fast. Like, how do we control? How do we manage all the people? Do we need to do meetings now? How mm -hmm. do we do a meeting? Like, I don't want to now to sit and talk in front of 20 people. Right. Right. So there is all the challenges and all the craziness that happens as we grow the business. Um, crazy experience, good experience. Uh, but yeah, so these two things of understanding that we're working with humans, understanding that there is new ways to generate leads and really going full force in, that's really what made the biggest shift around, you know, 2003 to 2006, seven. Right. So uh, a little off topic, but not really. And I'm going to circle and this will make sense here in a second. Do you feel that part of your American success is the fact that you're an immigrant? Yeah. Yeah. I think and the reason why I know that this is a little off topic, my, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Cuban, I'm Cuban American, right? So my parents came over in the eighties, right? Uh, from Cuba during the Mariel boat lift. So there's a certain, there's something to be said about immigrant families and the overall mindset. There's a lot of negative stuff that comes along with that, right? A lot of limiting beliefs and a lot of, um, yeah, absolutely. you know, there's a lot of that that goes, right? Like, hey, you have to absolutely. eat everything off your plate because they're kids in Africa. They're, you know, when we were in Cuba, we didn't have any food, right? So you have a lot of that and you grow up with that. And yeah. if you don't know how to manage it, that could be, that could be a negative thing. Yeah. However, I remember like during my summer months, we would, my father would wake me up three, he was a baker. We wake me up three o'clock in the morning. We were in the bakery four o'clock. Like, you know, during the Christmas season, I was in the bakery the 22nd, the 23rd and the 24th. Like we would sleep there. So I was a kid, right? After school, 2.30, I was in the bakery. So that stuck with yeah. me, right? And I think that, yeah. you know, a lot, I think that's a major advantage for number one, um, either children of immigrants or people that come, you know, to the country and they have yeah. that work ethic and they see the opportunity. I think that a lot of people, again, Sometimes they're they're born here and they're like, eh, you know what? It's it's everywhere. I can get it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think so that's look, when, a part in your success? Absolutely, because look, I grew up also at the, at the farm, so working hard. You know, also my my serving in the Israeli army, right? So we learn a lot of you know. There's a lot of mindset thing, but also it comes with a lot of limitation, right? That also I needed to work out through my journey, right? right? But Small example is when the first time I got a credit card here, I'm like, seriously, they're giving me a credit card? Wow, <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. that's, so that for me was, whoa, okay, if I build my credit here, I can get to the point that I get a credit card for 10,000 and 20,000 and 30,000 and 40,000, so I can use that money to build my business and then I'll pay it once I collect money from my client. This is, this is huge for me because right. Where, where I came from is not available and it's not, it's available, but it's very hard to get to, right? The other thing, the first time that, that we went to a dealership, right, to buy a car where, where I'm from, it's such a hard thing. And I'm, and I'm walking around dealership, like, I can get this car and pay $400 a month. Right. That's, for, for me, it's like my mind was like, wow, okay. When people the say, when, when people yeah. say today that there's not as much opportunity, what do you say to that? Oh, there's, <laughs> there's so much opportunity. There's not enough time. Exactly. Exactly. There's, it's great. I mean, look, where, where I came from, there's about, what now? Eight and a half, let's say nine and a half million people. So even if I build a great business and I get 30% of the market, it's three, four million people. We have 350 million people here. Mm -hmm. with a system that supports you. I know that a lot of people know the system taking advantage and all that. Okay, I 
listen, if you want to build a business here and you're really serious about it, there is, I think this is like an amazing place that supports you, right? The level of success, the, the your access to information, the way the system build is much, much easier. If you think, if you live in America and you think that it's hard to build a business here, go travel to different countries for some time and come back and right. your, and then, your, your we'll perspective is going to change. Right. We'll revisit the conversation and then, you know, see how you really feel about it. Um, the other thing <laughs> yeah. too is um, a lot of people just are missing out on opportunity in the service-based businesses. In other words, working yeah. with your hands for some reason now, it's nobody wants to do that. Right. And oh. I think, I think that there's a major disconnect and, um, funny story. So we used to have, I was in the financial industry and we used to have morning meetings, right? And everybody would be dressed to the nines. I'm talking white starch shirts, great ties, Gucci shoes, and everybody was in the office. And in the morning meetings, there was always construction going on. And the guy would always like point outside and he's like, Hey, you see those guys, you see those guys working out there. You could be that guy and you can be a bum working in the hot sun. Right. But just this goes to show. And so for a good portion of my young professional career, I was like, oh man, there's no money in physical labor. And my mother was a housekeeper, you know? So in my mind, I was like, well, you know, she's not, she's kind of physical labor, you know, she's a housekeeper. She doesn't make a lot of money. So I'm like, you know, I was indoctrinated with that. Come to find out <laughs> nothing could be further from the truth, <laughs> right? There is so much money in the home services business that it's uh, absolutely insane. And if you, if you can merge business sense, marketing, and just entrepreneurial principles, you can really go far. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you, I mean, one of the, the issues that we see today in the home service businesses is, you know, a lot of the business owner are older, right? So they are not as welcoming to technology. If it's social media or, or different tools, the way we can improve the communication with our clients, with our accounts, with generating leads on social media. So a lot of the older guys that are, that are not open for changes are kind of blocking it out and they're managing their business still the old way. Right. But when we see a younger guy, a younger mindset type of guy or girl coming into our business with the mindset of adopting technology, they're doing so much better their growth in the business it's so faster than the guys that oh no i i'm i'm still going to do it with pen and paper i'm only going to use excel and i'm like no there is different tools right. there is a better ways to communicate right so i think they've i think even on the flip side there is a huge opportunity in the home service industry and people can make a lot of money and pretty fast and the risk of coming into our business it's pretty low compared to many other businesses today Right, because it doesn't cost a lot of money to open even a franchise or just open your own business in the home service industry, but come with this new age type of mindset of I'm going to use all the tools. Your chance to be successful is so much higher. Right. Right. Every convention that I go to and I speak with other CEOs over national accounts or TPAs or any of it, I say one of the issues that we have, a lot of the business owners don't want to adopt new tools. Right. So it's not how good they dry the houses, it's how good they communicate. Right. How good are they willing to log to the app and click, I got to the house, I perform, here is the picture. Right. right? For a new, any new guy today, even a, a younger guy. Right. So many companies yeah. also use Matterports. And yeah. look, there's, and I get it, it's a divided camp, but again, it's not going to make you a better restorer, but it is going to make you a better documenter. And if that increases, right, just 5%, if it eliminates 5% of friction on getting paid on a claim, it's worth it. Absolutely. Look, I'm not looking at ourselves as a restoration company. We are not a water damage company. Right. We are not. We are a fresh start company. What we do is we help people see the positive in the negative. Right. This is who we are. By the way, we do water, mold, and fire. Right. At the moment that you flip it around, now it's all about creating a unique customer experience. If, it, you, are, if you are a adjuster, if you're a homeowner, I'm going to do whatever, 
right? So my view as a business owner, my goal is to add value. So when, when I see business that way, I'm not clinging into it needs to be done this way or that way. It needs to be done in a way that my customer feel uplifted, that he gets the file organized the right way. I want to make sure that he get a raise. I want to make sure that he can go home at five o'clock and be with his kids and be super happy. That's the way we view the business. Right. Make sense? So right. when you flip it around, you're, you're open to technology, you're open to changes, you're looking for changes, right? I'm looking for new trends in the industry, right? Because I know that this is my way to add more value to my clients. Right. Make yeah. And, and there's so much great technology that's coming out, simple things too, and um, not sponsored, but um, company cam is a great piece of technology, right? You know, just an app on your phone. Um, I have public adjusters that we work with sometimes, and sometimes they're the first ones on site. Sometimes I'm the first one on site. Just snap the pictures, make your notes, and then you can just add them as a collaborator. And now everybody's on the same page. It's a beautiful uh, thing, right? Um, Phoenix, um, the restoration uh, machines and equipment, yes. they've got great technology that they've been coming out with, with their dehumidifiers, with the Bluetooth technology, with the, with the dry phone, with the dry sense, where you it basically just, you can now monitor 15 projects from the comfort of your home, which, exactly. which as a business, there's two ways to look at this. Number one, as a business owner, well, you're not driving, you're, you're, and it's all about profit, profit, profit. Okay. That's one part of it. But the people side of the business is you're not, now, in order to monitor, Betty doesn't need to be there at nine o'clock in the morning. She doesn't have to call out from work to or come back during her lunch break to open up the door. Now you're not bothering them anymore. So you're you're making their life easier. And this is what technology go. does. And why people are so resistant to it, I'm not entirely sure. But I think that the the perspective that you have and what you're instilling is, hey, look look at all of these advantages on how it can save people time, money, and headaches. And when you do that, all of a sudden, it's a little bit more welcoming to use the technology. Absolutely. 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 And, and, and look, I think a lot of people are resistant to it because it just people don't like change. As much as they're saying, yeah, I want change. I like people don't like change. People get comfortable. They build their confidence based on what they know to do today. Right. Right. So if I'm really good in monitoring equipment and I'm the best one, I'm going to hold it very close to my chest because this is what my confidence build upon. Right. Right. My my things with my franchisees and our team, you confidence need to be built upon your ability to evolve. Right. Not your ability to attach to different things in the business because everything change and everything is going to change so much faster. Right. Right. So I think this why people are just having a hard time to let go. People are getting too comfortable. Um, that's what I usually see. It's people, I mean, the other day I had, a, I had a call with a guy that's doing about, it's not a franchisee, it's somebody that called that read one of the book and he's like, okay, I'm doing about $300,000 in revenue. And um, you know, I wanna grow my business. I'm thinking to open another business. I'm like, why don't you grow your business? <laughs> why would you go and open another one if you're just at 300,000? grow right. it to 600,000, 700,000. So we talked about the small changes that he need to make to make in his business to take it to 600,000. And you see, and I can hear his resistance to, oh, so now we need to start doing that. Yeah, Dan, I want to get to $700,000 in sales, but how I'm going to go do it now? I says, right. listen, it's, it sounds hard now because you, 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 you've been doing A, B for the past five years. And now you need to start doing CD, right? Right. So it's just making that flip. And I'm telling him just, it's a muscle. Just start making the small changes over a long period of time. And you're going to see that then this part is going to be easier. Right. right? So making these changes is super important. Right. So um, just sw switching gears here, um, as far as your business, right? What was that like one moment, that one catalyst, right? Where you experience in business and you're like, oh, wow, this is really working. Like what, was it something that you did? Uh, was it just a perfect storm? Was it good marketing? Like what was that catalyst where you're like, okay, I think that we're on the right track here. So that there's, so there is one every few years, right? So the first one was, okay, I recognize the restoration industry, 
then it was the one that wow i can generate leads from you know google or yahoo or any of right. the others then it was when i went to katrina um, and i got to meet a lot of other um, business owner in our industry right i was here for about three four years then and I was more than three three million dollar in revenue, and most of the guys were about four or five hundred thousand dollar in revenue. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? I barely speak the, the language. I just moved here. Why I grew to three and more, and they're still stuck there. And one of the things that I recognize is that they are very trade tradesmen's mindset, right? So they spend an hour talking to me about the blowers and the humidifiers and all that. I'm like, okay, but what is your goal with the business no i want to get to a million dollars like why don't you get there right right because not putting anybody down i'm like okay i don't really know the language and i right. got here why are you stuck here and then i recognize that i can help because i know how to generate leads in the market that i'm in i can help them generate leads where they are but i also can start working with them on shifting their mindset from you know focusing only about you know, drying houses to building a business. Right. So that was another eye opening to like, okay. And this is what kind of gave birth to the idea of a franchise. Right. So, My idea in the beginning was, yeah, go ahead. So let me ask you this. If someone says, Hey, you got lucky. What do you say? I think there's some luck to it, but uh, I'm not a big believer in luck. I, I still think that there's some timing there's involved. Some factors there, right? That there's, there's happened, always... right? So I've been in the right place. Right. 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 Yeah. So there is that. But I, I, I think, look, if you are working on yourself as as a human being, right, opening your mindset and, and kind of nurturing yourself and just, as we said, show up, just just be there and, and push hard. Right. I'm, I'm telling people, look, I, I can tell my success story probably in 60 seconds. Right. But it, to, to talk about my, my failures, probably I need a year. Right. There is so many failures that happen in between that we just push through. Right. Right. I built the team. I lost people. I signed up on project that I lost a lot of money. I I I pull myself to things. I got involved in many other businesses right. that a lot of them really didn't work. Right. So there's so many things that happened that was super hard. Right. Right. I had a hard time in the beginning, even to right. I was so shy for the idea that I need to sit and talk with my team, even four or five people was hard for me. Right. Like I didn't want it. I prefer to sit one on one. Right. But then at one point it was like, Idan, you have to start meeting with more people. Right. Idan, you have to push yourself and go network now. I hate it. And I'm still today, I'm not a big fan of small talk, right? right. I barely watch TV. I don't know so much about football or basketball, all that. Right. I'm, I'm very right. focused on the business and, and what I'm really passionate about. But you have to push through, right? So there, there, there is a lot of, uh, you know, I, I even at one point, I always, I'm, I'm a huge believer in bringing, uh, you know, finding mentors, right? Bringing consultant into my business, right? So I don't need to be the smartest person in the room. I just need to, I'm just very passionate about the vision. Right. I know, and I'm getting to know more and more what I'm aligned with and what is really important to me. So when I'm, you know, 80 years old, when I look backward, what type of companies I want to build and the people and the relationship and all that. But there's so much that I don't know. Right. Right. But and you that's, just that's have good. to go when, through it. When you realize, it when you realize that you don't know everything, that's when opportunities happen. Right. And if you yeah. just go ahead, you have to empty your cup per se and be like, I don't know anything. Being the smartest guy in the room, that's a problem. Like you don't yeah. want to be the smartest guy in the room because then you need a new, you need to find a new room. So, and it's funny that you brought uh, up mentors because that was actually something that I was going to talk to you about. At what point in your business did you have mentors? Uh, was it early on or was this later on once you already found some success? So it was after I found some success, um, unfortunately, because yeah. if you ask me today, I, I, I would go find mentors before I even would start the business. Right. Right. This is how much I believe because we need to have people in our life that, that stretch us, right. That tell you, Idan, look, I love you, but this is so stupid. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. We yeah. need to have it in our life. Right. Because at some time we start buying our own shit, yep. right? We start believing our own stories and this is, this is terrible, right? So after I found some success, then I start re reaching out. 
It's really one, one of the things that, I mean, I think the first mentor that I had is a guy that I sold SEO services to. Nice. Right? He, yeah, and the guy was very successful. And after the meeting, we went to lunch. And he's just like, okay, so what else do you do? You do? And we talked about the restoration and he started challenging me just there. And, I'm, I'm, and I was sitting there like, wow, this is great. Like I'm just sitting with a guy, you have so much more experience. You already been, there is something that I call, let's say, you know, a mindset that connected with how much money you are making, right? Right. So the reason that you make X amount of money is because you think in a way that makes X amount of money. Correct. And if you want to make more money, you need to find a guy that made a lot more money because the way he thinks, the way he process information, the way he experience the world is different. Right. Right. And usually these guys will challenge you the right way, will ask right. you the right question. Right. So every time that I surround myself with guys that are way ahead of me, it usually get me to, okay, I see how we experience it. Right. I see how we just translate the situation and I see how I see it. Right. Right. But it's also important to find guys that are aligned with the way you want to build your life. Right. This is where it comes the fulfillment and money. So when I met guys that are only about money, it didn't feel right to me because it's, it's not me. Right. Right. But when I found guys that find fulfillment, have a positive impact and been super successful with building their team and the businesses, I usually bring them in as mentor or advisory board or yeah, any yeah. of that. Yeah. And Super this, important. Yeah. And this is a topic that I, I like talking about quite a bit because again, there's so many, we all want growth, but very few people are coachable. Right. With, you know, my clients um, on, you know, the digital side and they're, they're trying to get their businesses to the next level. I was like, guys, like you got to you got to learn this. You got to tweak this. And if you don't know an aspect of your business that you're trying to get growth on, just find someone who's already done it and have and just ask questions. And if you're humble, this is what I've noticed. If you're humble, people who are successful are willing to help. Right. A thousand percent. Thousand percent. People who pretend to be successful, those are the ones who are like, eh, I'm, I don't want to help you. Like, I, I've got nothing for you. But real people, when you're satisfied, when you're fat, right? When you're all fattened up and you're 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 satiated, you there's no competition, right? It's collaboration. I mean, look, I mean, just in my area, there's plenty of your franchises around. I own a restoration company. Nobody feels threatened. Right, because more than enough to go around. If you start thinking collaboration instead of competition, yeah, things yeah. can happen there. Yes, 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 yes. And another thing that I found, and I and I and I see more and more with people that saw success, they enjoy. It's fun to see other people going through their journey mm -hmm. and reaching their own success. Right, it's fun. Right, it's fun when you sit and 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 you work with somebody, and then you start seeing them implementing it and and being successful. It's really, I think it's, it's, there is fulfillment in seeing other people do well and having a positive impact. Right. Right. So I think this is why if you approach the right people, they will be happy to work with you. Right. And that's why like, you know, whoever's watching and listening, you know, if you feel stuck in your business, regardless of what area you feel stuck in, just find someone that's already doing it and reach out and say, Hey, all it is, is just a message. If you message 10 people, nine of them may not respond, but all you need is just one person to go ahead and just give you one minute, take you under their wing. And that can totally change the trajectory of your business. You might forge fantastic, you know, friendships out of things like that. So, I mean, the possibilities are endless. And again, off camera, you know, we were talking, it's it, 90 percent of success is just showing up. Just show up, knock on the door, make the phone call, do what you got to do, ask for the help, be humble, and great things happen if you do that. Absolutely. So let me ask you this: How do you feel about digital marketing versus marketing reps? I mean, today I I think you need all of it, right? So you need. To, I think if you start in the area that you can see the most amount of success in. So you, if you are a great networking guy and you know how to get out there and build relationship, this is where you start. Now, when you, but, when you say networking, day, 
when you say networking, you're not talking about like your regular small breakfast networking meetings or. No, no, no. I, no I, when, when I mean it, I'm saying when, when if you know, there, there, there is these guys that I can walk into anybody's office and I, I, and I can make everybody my, my friends in five minutes. Right. There's just guys that just, they have it. Right. Right. They will walk anywhere and everybody's going to fall in love with them. It's just like an innate thing. They feel very comfortable. They are, they, they are comfortable enough to get out of their own head and really be interested in the people that sit in front of them. Right. So if you are this type of guy, build on top of your kind of innate ability, right? So I would start there, but I believe, I mean, and what we're seeing today that we want to have our franchisees and many other businesses that we're working with that they need to have generating lead through online, build local relationship, and then build re relationship with national account. So we, we call it the three, the three legs of the chair, right? right? You need the three of them to work full power if you really want to grow the business. Right. You need to be online today. Yeah, There's absolutely. no, you need to be online, right? You need to have reviews. You need to have some videos. You need to have content. And let me, let me just add a little bit of clarification to you need to be online because people get this confused. When I, when I say to people, hey, you need to be online, they're like, oh yeah, I am online. I have a website. No, a website is a digital business card. If nobody can find you, it's, it's no good. You might as well not even have it. When I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you're saying be online, you're talking about being present online. Yeah. That means running yeah. Google ads. That means having a Facebook presence, Instagram presence, whatever it takes, you have to be out of obscurity. Like you have yes. to be put in a position to where people can find you. Yes, 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 yes. Today, not doing it, it's crazy, right? Right. right. But again, depends what business you're in to the level of degree of how you're going to push it, right? But talking specifically about our business, you know, if you're a plumber or a roofer, something that homeowners are looking for, yes, you're a thousand percent, you have to be online. You, you have to be in a position that when people are searching for a, a keywords or something that's related to your business, they need to be able to find you. And to add another layer to it is you need to tell your story. Right. Right. As, as a marketing uh, company, I mean, when when I went out there to sell, you know, you know, website and SEO and PPC and all that many, many years ago, people used to tell me, you see my competition, just copy exactly the same thing. <laughs> right. Because they're successful, so just do the same thing for me. Right. And like, this is not, it's not going to work. Maybe you're going to generate a few more leads, but especially today people want to know who you are people want to know your story kind of bringing you are the brand even even if you're a one guy or you know you have a team of three people share your story what's unique about you what are you passionate about what's going to be different when i'm going to hire you compare hiring somebody else today buyers are expecting to see it online right and having a company culture too is important, right? Like if you have employees, if you have people that are part of the team, you know, having them on your LinkedIn profile or having them, you know, even if you're not a small, uh, even if you're a small organization, right? Maybe you've just got a couple of guys, have them check in on your Facebook page, right? Just have them check in and just take a quick photo and whatever. That is ex expanding your overall reach. And it starts to build a little bit of company culture, which is extremely important. People want to they, they they want to work with people that look like they're happy at where they're, where they're working at. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. And for the business owner building a team, I mean, look, I I wouldn't be where I am today if my team is seriously everything. Right. So building a culture is super important because that's really what empower your people. That's really what's the core, what the soul of your company. And get them to be involved online. That's absolutely an extra step that's really going to help you. Because I agree, people want to work with people that they know that they love what they do. Right. So there's no question about it. Yeah. So if um, right now with uh, you know for the restoration companies that are out there, the water mitigation companies that are out there, would you recommend um, smaller organizations or any organization for that matter to go after TPA work, third-party administrator program work? Depends how you're set up as a company, right? What I'm seeing today with some of our franchisees and other businesses, some companies it work well for them to go after a TPA. And for some of the guys, this is they 
it's not for them, right? Mm -hmm. It's very process oriented. Um, so it's not necessarily good for everybody. I think that right. will be the simple answer here. Yeah. So I wouldn't say go after TPAs. That's it. Explanation point. No, right. I wouldn't say that. Okay. You need to see if, if it's a good fit to your business. We have some guys in our system that it works very, very well for them. And some guys that we just told them to get off because it's not the right thing. They find a lot more success generating their own business, generating leads online, working with their national accounts, but not necessarily with TPA because it's very process oriented. It's a different approach. It's more of a it's quantity like you need to do a lot of work for that to make sense to you right right so, so otherwise it's, what i've heard yeah. in um having conversations with a lot of people in the restoration and first of all uh, full disclosure we don't do any program work and I, I think we were talking about this off camera right when we first got into the business i didn't even know there was a program <laughs> much less program work i didn't know there was aobs i didn't know anything right and we um you know we did pretty well our first year we did you know just shy of like seven figures the first year um and we didn't do any program work um yeah. but i started talking to people right like hey what do you do what do you do and they're like oh we do you know third-party administrator work we do program work i'm like okay great what is you know how do you feel about it and some guys hate it and they're like, nope, yeah. I don't want to do it. Other guys say, hey, look, you know, it's a volume type business and it keeps my guys busy around the clock. And then we're still doing our own prospecting, our own marketing, our own this and that. And yeah, those yeah. are those are the bigger wins for us. So I guess the the camps are just divided. Yes, yes. It, I, my what usually I tell the guys is, look, what's based on the way you build your business base, it's really build business upon the things that work very well for you, right? right. Don't just try to be everything for everybody. If right. you have a process that works in a certain way and don't underestimate the, the culture and the importance of the way you work your clients. Like, like don't discount who you are to be able to fit into something just so you can get your guys busy. Right. Right. This is something that I like, no, you don't need it because you, if you, if that's going to take some of your energy out, you're not going to be able to scale where you're supposed to scale. Right. So some business owners are very process oriented program work for them is perfect because they are so organized and they have, they have the ability to do a lot of volume and find a way to make profit, even when the margin are not there. Right. Some guys, our culture and the way they work, they're very customer focus oriented. And for them, it's, I don't want to discount my price so much because I have the ability to generate work this way, but I'm still going to be able to keep, you know, the right culture, the right inter interaction with my clients and really take care of them the way I should take care of, care of, care of them. So I wouldn't jeopardize that just to keep my guys busy. So having an understanding exactly. of your company mission is yeah. paramount. So I think that that would be a good barometer to kind of figure out, hey, look, where do I really want to go, right? And I think yeah. that by writing out a company mission and you know just, hey, this is who I am, this is how I want to operate, and kind of keeping giving giving yourself something to keep an eye on the prize, right? Say this is what I see, and I'm not going to compromise in other areas because again, there's tons of shiny objects, right? And for some. Yes. The third yes. the program work could be that shiny object, right? Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you start believing that you can create your future, seriously believe and understand that you can create your future, you just need to be super clear and committed to it. You can make it happen. You don't need to keep chasing things, as you as you said. Yeah. 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 But yeah, yeah. When when I see a business owner get to the point that he really believes in it. Like, I know that I can create my company this way. And this is how I want my team to be. And this is my culture. And they are super committed. They are bounded to be successful. When was it that you developed this vision for your company? When did you develop that, that culture? Did you write out a mission statement? Was it, did you visualize it anywhere? Or was it all just in your head? No, 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 no. So as... So it was in my head at the beginning, right? So I talked about, we care about the customers. It's all about the customer. And this is how we need to approach it and all that. As, as we grew as a team, um, when we got to about 15 or 20 people, 
then I started writing it down. This is who we are. And then we came up with the idea of be the fresh start. And as we grew as the franchisor, then it became more and more important, right? Because it's, it's became one of the things that I communicate most of the time, right? So one of my most important work in the past few years is our vision, right? Right. It's not so much. I barely work in the business today. I, I, I told you I have a great team. I have people, Miri, that have been with me now for more than 13 years now. She's a huge part of the company. She started as a secretary, mm -hmm. really overseeing pay-per-click campaign. Right. So today, she's the COO of the company. She's really doing amazing work. And I have other people on my team that have been with me for many, many years. Um, so one of my main things today is vision. Who we are, where we want to be. Who we are, where we want to be. Kind of always being the, the North Star of the company. So we are staying through, true to who we are, right? And we and we bringing new opportunities and we going through the changes and we're looking at trends that fits into where we want to be as an organization. Right. Right. And we make decision based on our mission and vision, not based on what is comfortable today. So right. sometimes we, we make the decision that today it's a, it's, it looks like it's a terrible decision because it's going to cost us a lot of money. Right. But over the long 10, 20 years, this is the right decision because we want to stay true to who we are. And as much, and as much as we communicate it and we stay more true to it and we celebrate it, we see a lot more success and much faster. Right. So there's, if there is a few things that I will tell people that even in the beginning part of their business, even if you have two, three people, write your mission and vision and be clear of what is important to you. Standard operating procedures. Right. And, and so besides the, besides the actual mission, your mission statement and, you know, how you vision the company um, and your core beliefs, right? Um, yeah. When would you recommend for an owner to start writing down their standard operating procedures? Day one. Day one. Absolutely. Day one. So, and yeah. here's, here's now, it, let me parlay this. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't get, I'm not saying now go write, you know, at 20 or 80 pages operation, but no, don't, <laughs> don't go there, but start collecting, you know, what works well for you. Right. Right. Start what, writing down culture. when I do. Huh? And what fits into the company culture. Things as yeah, simple yeah, yeah. as how is it, here's, here's the problem that uh, and I don't, I don't want to say necessarily it's a problem. It's what happens, right? Most business owners know what we want, and but we keep it up here. And then we get upset <laughs> when somebody else doesn't do exactly what we say. Like, wh why did you answer the phone that way? Well, because you never gave them a script and a mindset to go along with that script on yeah. why you should answer the phone in a certain way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Why did you, know, you, you get upset at the way that your technician knocks on the door, right? Is there a procedure? for that technician yeah. to greet yeah. the customer at the door. All of these, I think yeah. the devil's in the details and you know, we have it all in our heads. The sooner that you can write them down, the sooner that you put everything in place, not only does it keep you honest and on track to what your true vision is, right? Yeah. Then everybody that's part of your team also gets to benefit from you taking Absolutely. the time to put these things together. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I just and do it as you go through your business right if somebody thinking now to open a business don't wait until you write everything down and then open the business right, right? <laughs> i had a conversation with one what, what, because i believe in a movement i think there there is a very important part in get going yeah. don't overthink everything get going get going get going but as as you get going learn and write down what works well Yep. Right. So you can start sharing it and communicate and put it in front of people. But don't confuse writing, you know, 80 pages manual before you start a business because you have to go through the experience. So right. you, ha you have to have both at the same time. Like go, 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 but collect what works. Yeah, right? exactly. So another question okay. is um, what at what point were you able to get out of the truck you know, and, and really start focusing more on business development. So it, it wasn't a, so pretty early because I'm very passionate about, you know, the 
where are we going as a business, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about um, how I'm going to build, how I'm going to scale the business. Right. Right. So right. I, I pretty early, I always push myself to the position on, wait, if I'm going to spend more time generating leads, that's really where I bring more value to the business than actually cutting drywall. Right. Right. So it was in my mind. It didn't happen the day one, but it was in my mind all the time. Right. Right. That right. It's, it's scalable if I can do something and that I can generate more compared to spend my, my time cut, cutting walls. Um, I think three, four, five years in the business is where I really start getting out of the truck. Mm -hmm. But then at every point of the business, there is different level of trucks. working on the business. <laughs> right. And there's there's different right. proverbial trucks. Yeah. Right. You're right. You're right. The truck is getting bigger and bigger. But yeah, right. yeah. Even so today, here's, you know, when I... So here's, yeah. here's just one quick thing. And sorry, sorry to interrupt, but just I want to make sure that I don't miss this. So you that happened for you around year three to five. If, something like that, yeah. Something like that. So, so ballpark in that range. If today everything that you know, everything that you've accomplished, you keep that, but you had to start all over again, do you still think that it would still be that three to five, or would you try to remove yourself earlier? No, I think to. I mean, with my experience today, I will scale the business much, much faster. Right. So, and the reason what I'm I know asking this. Yeah. The reason why I'm asking this is because I think that there's so much value there, right? Um, is there, should most business owners, right? Assuming that they really want to be a business owner, not an owner operator and, you know, not, not a technician, a business owner. Do you think that they are spending too much time? The majority of them are spending too much time being in the nitty gritty all the time and that they should remove themselves from the business and have a technician, maybe take a little bit of a pay cut because they have to overcome those expenses, but really focus on business development. A thousand percent. Okay. They need to spend more time. Okay. So this is a, they need to understand their skills, right? Because some guys are really operation type of mindset, right? They want to see the details. They want to see the processes. This is where they live and breathe. Yeah. If this is what they want to do, and this is something that they're really good at, they need to hire somebody to do the business development. Right. Right. So I'm not saying that every business owner now need to go and do business development. Right. Every business owner need to understand his skills. Right. Right. What what is really good at and what is not good good at and what what he need to do, he needs to double down on what he's really good at. What I see and myself included, I, I spend too much time trying to fix the area that I'm not really good at. Instead of doubling down and what I'm really good at. Right. So when you are self-aware enough to be comfortable to say, look, this is where I'm great. This is where I'm terrible. My life is too short. I'm not going to try to fix all the areas that, that I'm not good. I'm going to try. I'm going to build a team with people and I'm going to give them the space and I'm going to nurture them and I'm going to support them to really become, to really help them develop their innate abilities within the business. So don't try to do everything. Life is too short. But then at the same time, you have to double down on, on your really innate abilities, right? So if you're this great networking guy, we'll, we'll go back to that and everybody falls in love with you and you have these charms and you can connect and you can think big. How can you get better doing that? Right. How can you read more, more books about sales and communication and strategies? If you are an operation guy, right? Processes oriented, everything has to be organized. You're this type of guy, how can you be a lot better at doing that? Right. Right. And find the right partner that will do the other thing in, in the business, partners or employee, whoever it is. Right. So it's not necessarily business development. It's just being really remembering that you started the business to be a business owner and you didn't start the business to be in the truck all day. Right. And just having, and again, to talk about doubling down on the things that you're good at, identifying that being truth, truthful with yourself. And sometimes that's a hard thing to do, right? Sometimes it's a really hard thing to do because you, you, you have to be really vulnerable and you're like, man, I want to be good at this, but I'm not. And to yeah. be able to bring somebody in, however, here's a little, a, a little thought process. You still have to be somewhat competent in 
those things, at least in my opinion, on the things that you're going to outsource. Going back to marketing, this is uh, an approach that a lot of business owners, I'm, I'm having these conversations and I'm like, look, you need to know how to get your phone ringing. You need to know how to, how how people talk in that world, right? Like what's, you know, what, how are conversions actually taking place? You know, like if you don't understand that digital world, you're never going to be able to really take your marketing campaigns to the next level. But yet people don't want to spend a couple of hours trying to figure out just the basics and then saying, you know what, this isn't my passion. This is not something that I'm good at, but at least I understand it. Now, when I outsource it or when I hire someone, now we can talk the same language. I'll let them do what they're supposed to do, but at least we, we can have a conversation. And that's that's a big hurdle for a lot of people. And I'm, I'm using the digital marketing space because it's it's what I run into the most. But that happens in yeah. all, you know, in all areas, right? Yes. Technicians and everything. Yes, yes, yes. Look, I mean, today you can learn about everything and it's all available for you with really a click of a finger, right? Yeah. So I agree with you. There's no reason for you not to understand it. Right. There, is, there is a difference between having a good understanding about something than actually doing it every day. Right. So I agree with you. There is no reason for you that somebody is not going to spend enough time and, and we're talking about a few hours a week or a few hours a month, or maybe you'll do it for a few months to really understand the marketing world of today. Right. right? I mean, it's, it's, I think it's crazy not to understand it. Oh yeah, you're right. Exactly. Having a little bit of an understanding in all aspects of your business is extremely important, right? I mean, you yeah. should have an understanding of how it works and say, hey, look, I'm good at this. I'm not good at that. And then those things that you're great at, you double down. The other things that you're not, you get the right players because there's plenty of people yeah. that they just, what they want to do is they want to crunch numbers all day. That's what they want to do. And that's where they shine, right? Yeah. Let's circle back real quick. When did you realize that you were ready to franchise and where did that opportunity come from? So going back, so when I went out to Katrina, you know, I met all the guys that had been stuck in the trade and we kind of figure out that we can give them leads. We started a license agreement with a few guys and we recognized that our system works. We are actually helping them, they're making money, we're able to train them. I trained the first few guys, I was with them on the phone basically all day. And then at that point, after we proved the concept, we knew that we can franchise now. I mean, we did it with four or five guys and it worked. And then at that point, we basically decided that we want to franchise. I didn't know anything about a franchise then, right? So my lawyer came back to me and says, look, Idan, right now you have four or five license agreement. You're basically operating as a franchise. It's time to become a franchise. And I was like, what is a franchise? Right. And how it's supposed to work. And then I spent about six months reading everything about franchise, trying to figure out, and then we franchise the business. Right. And then uh, what was like the first goal when you started franchising, right? Did you have like a number in mind? Like, hey, if I have 10 franchises, if I have a hundred, like what, what was, there must've been something. Yes. Yes. So we, how oh, we did it. So I always, right, run numbers, right? So when I have the, the vision part, I'm always breaking up and it's in a very simple way. Like right. I, if I have 10, if I have 20, if I have 30, where I'm going to break even and all that. So I'm always doing it automatically as I'm thinking about ideas. I think yeah, we always had big numbers in our, in our mind, right? It, you know, it's a, what if we're going to get to hundred? What if we're going to get to 20 by the end of the year? Wow. 20, how are we going to do it? Do we have room, right? So there's always question and hesitation and going back and forth. So I think our, our first goal was to that we need to get over the 25, right? This was our number. We know 80, I think 85% of the franchise system in the world, I think if the number is right, they don't have more than 25 franchisees, mm -hmm. right? So our goal was let's get over the 25. Because that was that was the benchmark. If you can get over that, like, okay, right? Can we get there? Right. It's kind of like right? in business, think, right? Like five years. Like everybody was like, if I can survive my first five years in business, I should be okay, right? Okay. So twenty five was that number for you. Um. So let me ask you. And before we, because now we're starting to get into bigger numbers, right? So the twenty five that was kind of like the first goal. How did you even get to the point of selling? your first franchise? Did you have to develop a new marketing campaign? Did you have a, a franchise broker? Or was it just Idan picking up the phone and being like, hey, I got this great opportunity for you? Like, how did that, how did that go down? Idan picking up the phone, I have great opportunity for you. That's, 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 that's exactly that. 
with, with my first guy, and it's funny because we, we put a post on it on LinkedIn. With my first guys, it was, okay, I'll ship you the equipment. Don't even pay for the equipment. I'll ship you the equipment because I was so confident with how this thing is going to work because I, I tried it before, right? So the big thing for me was to, a lot of my approach in business, I'm going to pilot things really fast, prove success, and then build on top of it. Right. Right. So before I'm doing huge steps, I'm doing pilots all the time. Right. So we did a pilot. It works. And then so the first guy I call, he says, listen, I have a great opportunity for you. This is how it's going to work. You're going to be successful. I'm going to be working with you. I'm going to ship you the equipment. You don't need to worry about the payment right now. Right. This is how much is going to be the franchise fee. But don't worry about the payment right now. You just need to commit to go through a training, buy a van, paint the van and do all that. Right. Right, so this was the first sales. This was like, I, I just- Were you targeting like, oh, a specific type of contractor? Were you like, who, who was your, 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 people, your main prospect? In the beginning, people that I knew from the industry. Okay. It wasn't even calling this- So other people, I, 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 so you, you were calling, so basically you would have called like a company like me and you were like, hey, Rico, yeah. by yeah, the way. If I knew you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Rico, awesome. Listen, that's if, amazing. If yeah, if you're in the business and you are, Doing three, three, four hundred thousand, and you want to grow to one point five or two, I can help you get there, and this is how we're gonna do it. And you're gonna pay me a fee. Right, so this is how we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which, which again, <laughs> this is, this is, and this just goes to show the pattern, right, in opportunity, because most people don't see the opportunities that are right in front of them. You've already, on several occasions, saw opportunity and you pounced right on it. You're like, Hey, this guy has a business. Instead of just saying, ah, he's not going to be interested because he's already got a business. You're like, no, 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 no. I have a proven system that can get your business to the next level and you're going to pay me for it and you're going to be happy. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I see today more and more is, you know, one of the things with an entrepreneur, they have the ability to move forward still when there's a lot of things that are unknown, right? So I, did, I don't need to know everything for me to be able to take an action. Right. I just need to know enough and then I'm going to go after it. Right. And then I will discover more as I go. Yeah. The good and stuff and the bad stuff. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I told you my, my failure, it's, it's a much longer story than my success story. <laughs> right, right. right. So a lot of times yes. I remember... I remember one of, as we started with the carpet cleaning, we got a call for a boat that was on smoke or something. And I gave them an estimate and I'm like, yeah, I never cleaned the boat, but we probably can get it done in four or five days. And we charge them about $700, I think. It took us four days to clean the boat. Right. Right. So nice. I have a lot of those, these stories. Another, another example, I, at one point, I worked with a, a manager of a building and he told me, Dan, look, we have about... 100 units that need to be repainted and recarpeted and get ready for new tenants. And I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I lost so much money on this project, right? right? So many times jumping into things cost me a lot of money. But, you know, I'm sitting here in front of you today and having this conversation because of the few times that worked. You only have difficult. to be right. You only have to be right a few times. But if you walk away from the table, right? And when the chips are down and you say, that's it, that's it. You're never, you're never getting back into the game, right? But if you can go ahead and take it in stride and say, what did I learn from this situation? Like I've been in projects where I've lost my shirt and I'm like, Ooh, okay. You know, you're paying to go to school. Like I just paid for this lesson and they're expensive lessons. Yeah. My contract, I call it an $80,000 contract because, <laughs> because again, my first, in the beginning, it was just an invoice and that was it. Like no terms, no nothing. And then something happened. I'm like, ah, okay, this is an expensive lesson a line, a sentence, and then more and more. And now, you know, by the time everything was said and done, I got an $80,000, you know, agreement now. Um, but just being yeah. able to get back and say, okay, I'm going to persevere. I only have to be right a couple of times. And that's typically where success really follows you. Yeah. And keep moving forward. Absolutely. How many franchises uh, total now? So we have uh, over 100 franchisees. We're covering close to two-thirds of the United States, right? So we have some franchisees that own 
40, 50 territories. So how do you, how do you break up the territories typically? Is so it each territory is about 300,000 people. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so three hundred. So basically, by population, that's how you determine. By, by population, it? yes, 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 yes. By population, okay. yeah. And then you have a lot of uh, franchisees that have multiple territories. Exactly. Yeah, we have franchisees that started with one or two, and then they grew to four, five, six, seven, and ten over the years. Yeah, I'm not trying to be, you know, a three thousand franchisees type of system. Right. I, I, I don't believe in it. And this is not where I'm trying to go. It's not aligned with our culture, right? Would be the first start. I want to see. So we are very selective with the people that we bring in. We want to make sure that because we also sell in exclusive territories. Right. So once you bought a territory or two, this is your area. This is your business. OK. Right. This is your clients. Right. So I want to make sure that I'm partnering with the right franchisees and right. also they have the opportunity to really build the business that they want to build. Right. Right. I'm not interested in, you know, putting 10 franchisees in one town and get, getting them to compete with each other because then it's really hurting the customer service. Right. Hurting the customer service or hurting the company culture in a way also. Right. Yeah, 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 everybody's absolutely. cutting their own throat and it, they're under the same flag. I mean, that's obviously not what you want. Um, yeah. So... Do you currently own any, are, there, do, are any of the, your shops per se, are they company owned or everything is franchise? Not anymore. Okay. I used to have four that I owned, but then I worked out a deal that the person that managed the day to day had, had an opportunity to buy me out of the certain part. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So what are the projections yeah. moving, moving forward? Like what's the, what's the next big hurdle? So we, we are growing now in a, we're adding anywhere between 30 to 35 new franchisees every year. Uh, we'll get to about probably 250 franchisees in the US. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going to stop and then we're going to start developing other silos, right? So franchise for plumbing, for roofing and creating more of an ecosystem between our franchisees. Got it. Got it. So developing, so a lot of, a lot of good things coming down uh, in the oh, near future. Okay. Right. I like my my feeling that is really that we just started. Really? Yeah. And yeah, my yeah. my approach is like I I'm you know with everything that we learn with everything that we develop with the relationship with my team and all that we really feel that we just started. This is like day one. What are we doing now? Right. So what would be your number one piece of advice um to your younger self just getting into the business, if you could only give yourself a little bit of advice, what would it be so that you could get to the position that you are today faster? You know, I started developing, really investing in myself probably five, six years after I got into business. I will, I will go back and develop myself from day one or even before i even start a business because it's all about mindset right right so me getting out of the old patterns of belief of all the limited belief and i don't deserve it and money is the hard thing and you have to work very hard to make money i have a lot of limited belief and i see how they impact me during the journey and only when i woke up to my patterns and I and I recognize that oh wow I'm reliving my family patterns and when I woke up to it and I start breaking them down and going through the transformation suddenly my business really shut up right? was there so, a moment for you that you can recall where you're like oh wow yeah I'm living this pattern was there a moment that you can recall yeah. when was yeah, it absolutely yeah it's at one point I was so stretched out partner with in other businesses and I was invested in real estate and suddenly everything starts falling down, crushing in a way even. And I had problem with my with my main business and I'm and I'm and I'm, I remember I'm driving on the 101 and I'm like, what the hell is happening here? Like this is I'm reliving that it doesn't make any sense because I'm working so much harder. I have so much opportunities that I'm involved in, but I'm really going backwards. And at that moment, he's like, okay, there, I'm stuck somewhere. It's not the businesses. It's not about how hard I work. It's not about anything external. It's about something in me. And that moment really 
shifted my mindset from being very external focus to very, very internal focus. And that really changed everything. And then I went back and I started listening to videos about self-development because I didn't believe in any of it. Who, is your who, who are your favorite um, personal development coaches, if you will? Oh, so I, I've been on a crazy journey. So I have a lot. My, the, the first guy, the first seminar that I went to was Tony Robbins. Yeah, nice. So I'm in the, yeah, I'm in his seminars and I'm jumping there and I'm all going all that. And I'm start seeing, I start experiencing different shift in mindset. Right. I'm like, okay, wow, I'm feeling great here. But you Sounds were a little really, bit of an but you were a little bit of an introvert from what I um, from what I'm gathering. So did that help you break out? Because you seem like a very dynamic guy now. So yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was very. I used to I used to have a very not not like I started I started a lot right. 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 So I was very quiet. I didn't, I didn't want to speak in front of people. Okay. Uh, because I didn't know if my next word is going to get stuck or not. Right? right. Right. So when I went to the first event, I'm jumping there and I'm feeling like, wow, I'm on, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Right. And I saw that my, my entire physical, my entire, everything changed. And then when I'm going back to an uncomfortable situation, I'm closing off again. Right. And I'm like, okay, what happening here? Who is this guy? And who is this guy? Right. And then I listened to another, uh, I listened to a guru in India, right? And he said something, before you're trying to figure out the world outside of you, figure out the world inside of you. And I'm like, the world inside of me? What this guy mean? And then also I experienced the different shift between my experiences and I, I think it was about 12 years ago. And that moment got me on a journey of a real deep self-discovery type of experience that I, and it's very painful, right? Because oh, yeah. it's painful because when you understand that you are the master of your existence, of your universe, you also understand that you are the one that created all the pains. Yep. And, that, the that and that's difficult. That's a difficult pill to swallow. And, uh, you know, the part as you're talking, I'm thinking about how this applies to most of us, right? All the added stress, the added bills, the um, business, losing business, losing opportunities, all of this actually stems from sometimes self-sabotaging effects. You don't even realize it. This is a mindset issue. And sometimes they're deep rooted mindset issues. And when you can analyze yourself and say, oh, here's this pattern and you can break away from that that's when you start looking at life. And then all of a sudden, new opportunities start to pop up. It's amazing what happens when you can quiet, when you can quiet the rest of the world and you spend a little bit of time with yourself and you're like, oh, wow, this is how it works. Yeah, yeah. With a lot of, with a lot of business owners, when, I, when I'm, you know, when they're really having a hard time to build a good team and they say, people come and they take advantage of me and I cannot find the right people. This is not for me. And I'm telling them, listen, it's not about your team. There's something in you that you keep attracting the wrong people. You feel comfortable with being around people that are not right for you. Right. So stop blaming your team, start evolving, and you're going to see that you're going to start bringing into your team the right people because you're, you're, your internal and your your experience of the world is going to change, right? So one of the big things that happened to me as I'm going through the journey, my relationship with my existing team change. It becomes so much more meaningful. Some of the people got off the boat. Right, because you couldn't handle so it. I, they, yeah, right, because they didn't want to change. They want to keep everything the way it was. And suddenly I also saw them in a different light, right? I didn't approach it from a very limited mindset. Suddenly I approach it from a place that, listen, we can create this dream that we have, but everybody have to have the same mindset. We need to have this growth mindset. So some people fell off the boat and some people, my relationship with them got so much better. We feel so comfortable with each other. There is not a competition between me and him or me and her. It's more of supportive environment that we want to see each other being more successful. And that... If I will credit one thing to my uh, ability to keep growing the business, it's mindset. That's it. Not the marketing, not the franchise, not anything else. 
right? Because the reason that you are stuck somewhere for so long, it's only because of your patterns. Yep. Once you dissolve your patterns, because if you really understand the point that you create your own reality, the difference between you making half a million dollar a year to a million dollar a year, just your mindset. Right. Not the government, not the leads, not your team, nothing. Not the amount of time. Everybody's got the same 24 hours a day. And yeah. I mean, look, we, we see people every day that build billion dollar companies in five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Yep. Yeah, it's mine. It's, it's not, it's. Yeah, it's, right? yeah, it's the same 24 hours. As a matter of fact, you look at some of these people and you're like, these people like never work. Like, how do they, how do they find all this time to make this money? It, it's so there's, there's no correlation as much, as much as we've been brought up to think that you have to work really hard, you have to work really hard, you have to work really hard, you have to put in 18, 20 hour days, right? No sleep. That doesn't always equate more money. Right. Oh, it doesn't always no, no, equate no, no. more impact. Right. No, no. And taking a step back and just trying to see where you truly fit in and how you can work on yourself and how you can have bigger and better impact on more people. That's where the real change happens. Exactly. Exactly. And then put in the 18 hours or whatever it is, because you're super passionate about the creation. Right. 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 You're not putting the 18 hours to chase money. You're putting the 18 hours because you're saying, okay, I want to create this thing because I'm passionate about it. This, this is part of who I am and I want to make it happen. And now your level of energy is not from a place of, I need to make it happen because I need to end, I need to make X amount of money. Right. You, it's like a kid when when go out and play outside. Like when my kid want, want to play basketball outside, I don't need to inspire him. Right. Like he wants to play basketball. He's going to be out there. He's going to play as much as he wants because he's just passionate about it. Right. This is how we need to live life. We're like, we're human beings. We are, there's the. Whatever, the it is that you do, whatever it is that you do, do it with passion, regardless of where you're at. Even if you're not where you want to be and you're doing the things that you don't want to do. If just by having a little bit of a paradigm shift, a little bit of a mind shift, just by doing it with a smile on your face and changing your physiology changes everything, everything. Yeah, yeah. And again, life is long. There's a lot of opportunity. Someone sees, you know, you doing, you know, work with a smile on your face. We're like, man, that's, that's a great guy or that's a great gal. I mean, let's, let's talk to them. Like weird things happen. And you're like, how did this person get so lucky? They were just, it was a mindset thing. It was an emotional thing. It was an energy thing that they were putting out. So, you know, let me ask you this and then we'll go ahead and wrap up, but I want to make sure that the audience gets some value. What would be your top recommended books for every entrepreneur to read? Do you have a list of books that you would recommend? I have a feeling you're going to recommend get out of the truck, but you know, <laughs> so that I wrote, wow, what's the one book or few books? I Maybe read a few books. Book. I mean, this no, this is the more of like the the spiritual side of it. So I don't know how. No, no, no. Yeah. Hey, look, this is it's it's yeah. important. So let's this go. This is the book I'm reading right now, right? The Way of the Superior Man. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's really understanding you know that that can be a good read because that's really understanding the play between the masculine e energy and the feminine right and and the importance of following your mission and your passion and all that right mm -hmm. so that's a great book um tony robbins have great books uh, there's nothing now that comes uh, to mind Let's see around me if i have here yeah look into the library now, now. Yeah, I have like some sort of thing. Yeah. I read, I, in the, in the past few years, I read a lot of books about, um, you know, the spirituality part. Like, what's, I, I will learn about space and time. Uh, um, you know, I'll learn about what existence is all about, uh, right. how the planet works, right? The development of human beings and stuff like that, because I'm very, very interested. For, for me, it's super clear that, it's so much of an internal game, right? It's so much of an energy game than anything else, right? Right. Everything that that we see in the in the physical world is already a result of, right? So when we try to fix our life 
through fixing the external things is basically we're dealing with stuff that already happened. Right. Right. So a lot of my uh, reading are very deep into the the way the universe, the way the world works, the way we operate as human beings. Right. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more esoteric, yeah. right? Mystical, right? Yeah. yeah. Miss, yeah, because I, it's, it's as much as I explore more and whoever I read, even, even when I, when I read, you know, people that write books about business and when I see that they've been very successful, when I really go into the core of the belief, you find that they are very, very much into the spiritual side, but then they translate it into the business side. Right. That's why like John Maxwell, I mean, which is a highly successful author, right? I mean, he's, he's yeah. constantly constant, like all of his books are based on biblical principles, right? Like all of, all of his stuff is based on that. He's like, you always have to have something that kind of guides you and just understand it is spiritual, right? And everybody expresses their spirituality in different ways and that's fine. But at the end of the day, yeah. taking, taking a look inside that's the one commonality. That's the one thing that everybody has. You know, one thing that everybody gets down to. Whoever you're gonna read, whoever went through the kind of the journey of success, they always coming back to look. Most of the world, most of what we see is really energy. It's not even physical, right? right. So us trying to fix everything through the physical side is really a waste of time. You, you, you're fighting a cycle that you're never going to get out to is when you step out of the cycle and you really go in internally, this is where a real shift happen. Right. And take your, right, taking, so, taking your own advice really does help sometimes, right? Removing yourself yeah. from the day to day and talking to yourself. And this is a practice that I've been, that I've been doing um, for a very, very long time because it's so easy for me to give advice to anybody else. Right. But haven't you noticed it's always <laughs> difficult to take your own advice? So I started um, several, several years ago it, it, as part of my meditative practice. Right. I would go ahead and remove myself and just really visualize myself and give myself the advice and be like, OK, I coach yeah. coaching myself. And when you do that, it's, it's a weird thing that happens to the mind. But the mind's like, oh, yeah, I should probably respond to this. And if, if yeah. I take this advice, this is probably how it's going to work. Eden, thank right. you so much for coming on the show. Hopefully we could do this again sometime. We could probably go for like another two hours. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, thank you so much. And um, where can we find you and anybody who's listening? Where can they find you on social media? Um, to get in contact with you. Yeah, so we, 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 I post a lot on uh, LinkedIn. So Idan Speiser, you're going, you're going to find me on LinkedIn. And then if you want resource, it's a lot of the things that I put out are free. There's a lot of videos and all that. It's get out of the truck that life. And really, this is the two best places to find me. So get out of the truck dot life, uh, which by the yeah. way, I was on the site, tons of great resources uh, on the site, uh, lots of great video. You actually took your time and we're explaining everything. It doesn't seem like you're holding anything back. You're basically giving the blueprint for yeah. what made your business successful. And you touched on a lot of things, marketing and mindset. So anybody who's looking for that resource and uh, you want to get inside of uh, you know, uh, his head, this is the way to do it. All right. Eden, thank you so much. And I will talk That's to awesome. you soon. All right. You. You've been listening to Restoration Domination interviewing the restoration business's top industry insiders, the movers and shakers, the hustlers and hackers. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on Instagram. Find Rico at Rico Garcia Jr. Find Ecotech Pro at Ecotech Pro. And check out the YouTube channel at Ecotech Pro. Till next time, this is Restoration Domination. Hustle. Hack. Dominate.